This is a character who lives in the shadows, he moves in the shadows, and when he comes out of the shadows, we wanted that to be a, a great reveal. He's not the type of assassin who's gonna kill someone with a sniper rifle a mile away. He needs to be there, and he needs to look them in the eye. Sometimes, I feel remorse. But not. And I mm. We added a new biotic power called Pulp. Now you're able to give specific commands to your squad members in real time. We don't force you into cover anymore, but going into cover, huge advantage in the game. You're going to get killed a lot less using cover. Heavy weapons are special in the sense that they're not unlimited. Instead of instantaneously traveling from planet to planet, we now you burn fuel. You get to scan the planet, revolve it. It's like a it's almost like a planet toy. What it reminds me of sometimes are Isaac Asimov, some of the more high-minded science fiction that I used to read. Phenomena. 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 Video games can be powerful and emotional and, uh, and and resonate with people the same way. Uh, you don't just play a character, you become a character, you build the character. RPGs will begin with this long prologue that is, oh, for 400 years the forces of good fought the demons of evil and then they sealed away the demons of evil and then the demons got out somehow and it's just like, enough, I want to play the game. It's too much. It's as much a shooter as it is an RPG. So we're combining a lot of the features of rich role-playing game, exploration, progression, customization, story, narrative, dialogue, characters. You lose! Good day, sir! Mass Effect has really pulled off being able to go deep into the story and having such such backgrounds for these characters that you you know why you're shooting who you're shooting. It's Commander Shepard's story. That is the Mass Effect trilogy. He is a soldier with the Systems Alliance. You know, in terms of our story, it's like the 007s of the galaxy. He is, you know, a very high-ranking human in this kind of universe of politics. He's like Captain Kirk without the Federation. He gets out there kicking ass. He always seems to be getting himself in a life or death situation. Captain is dead. Shepard's in this difficult position because, again, once again, people aren't listening to him. And they, there's no specific proof, but there's a lot of evidence to show that something is going on. Cerberus is a pro-human organization. I think of it as kind of a think tank. You know, it's not necessarily a terrorist group, but it's not far from it. Finding them and convincing them to work with you could be challenging, but you're a natural leader. We really wanted to focus on making the gathering of the team and, and keeping that team together and getting them to do what you want, kind of the key of this, of this game. You actually have to sit there and think through the attributes of each individual person that you want to potentially bring on board. Ah, uh, take a breath. You assume Hippocratic Oath, they're not going to hurt anyone, but uh, he sees it as a larger, larger picture. You know, if he has to kill someone to save 10, he'll do it and he'll enjoy it. You start to favor some over others because you really get into sort of the play style and how they balance against you playing as Shepard. And I think that that does establish a sense of relationship. Because the characters are so different, they grade against each other, they bring out the best and the worst in each other. There's a huge difference between just recruiting your squad mate and retaining their loyalty. I may not have believed it before, but I don't have what you do.
trustworthy inside the game, like real life, man, you'll die at the end. There's an intelligence and a logic to the world. It feels thought out. It doesn't feel like they're just making shit up as they go along. We've put a lot of effort in making sure that the world feels alive. So, I mean, you walk into uh, a room, you're going to see people having a conversation. They're going to be over, uh, you know, chopping up monkey parts at, at the butchers. And that real sense of this is my own personal story. I'm not going to have an experience like anyone else who's playing the game. I feel like you do have more variety. It's not just be a d be nice, or be neutral. I feel like there are other shades of gray in there. And yes, you feel like you're the comedian, which is really hard to pull off to make the player feel like they're funny. If you've been a certain way throughout the course of the game, we're not going to forget about it in the last 45 minutes. So this time the game is going to remember, and you're going to get the ending that you deserve. You start the game dead, and you can finish the game dead. And that shocked a lot of people. Commander. When a character in a video game who you have grown really attached to for one reason or another dies, it says to the player, this is not a safe world. Can a game elicit any type of emotional response other than maybe anger and obviously fear? I'll admit it, I've gotten a little teary-eyed once or twice, or I've gotten really, really angry, and you know, and it's not just angry because I'm frustrated with the gameplay, I'm angry because of how the story's playing out. Mass Effect 2 is me. Damn, that's an ME too. Mass Effect, hey, there you go. Mass Effect 2 is me. <laughs>